In this lesson, we're going to be creating placeholder geometry and writing an FBX. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump over here to our aerial uh, shot. And I saved at the end of last lesson a new version. So we'll go ahead and version up by hitting Alt, Up Arrow. And then we'll double click to enter version 2. Okay, so we've got our scene and our track and everything. And now what I want to do is create some placeholder geometry around the top of this building so that our 3D department can see that and then use it to create the shadow and the scale and the different things that we'll need for those dragon passes. So there's a few other things I need to add to be able to work with this. So one is going to be a scan line render. So we'll go ahead and drop that in and connect our object scene pipe to the scene and our camera to the camera. I'm going to hold control and just add a dot node there so that that can kind of just be a little more organized. And then I'm going to merge in that scan line render. So we'll add a merge node just hitting tab and adding the merge there. And then we can see actually what our point cloud looks like merged over the top of our shot. And um, in a moment, I'm actually going to disable that uh, point cloud, but for now, it's helpful. So let's come up here to our camera tracker. And if you recall, we've got a few user tracks. And these user tracks right here, kind of up at the top of that, these are the ones that I want to use to create my geometry. So I'm going to select those. I just dragged a box around them. And then I'm going to right click, go to... Um, create and choose cube. Now that is going to give me this cube here, but I can't see it yet because it's not plugged into my scene. So I'll go ahead and plug that into the scene. And as you can see, it comes in and it's massive. We're like inside of it here. So let's turn our uniform scale of that cube down considerably. So let's just kind of reposition this and I'm going to bring that down pretty small here, kind of like that. And I'm actually going to X out of that camera tracker for a minute because it's kind of given me issues with being able to see what I'm doing. So right about there, that's pretty good. And then um, I'm going to try my best not to come in and edit these values because you can edit them by doing this. Now, I like to do these for small adjustments, but really we want we don't want to do them too much because it ends up causing our axis to be so far out of the cube. So um, I'm going to try to edit it as much as we can just using the scale. So let's go in there and take the scale of the Y down a lot. So like 0.1 instead of 1. And that might be, that's close, um, but it's still a little small. So let's do like a 0.15. That looks pretty good there. And then let's go into our rotation. And I'm just going to kind of start rotating this around. Okay, that looks pretty good on the top of that. And then let's kind of start rotating this way. All right, that looks pretty good. And then let's try over here. All right, so you can see that's kind of coming into place. Great. Now let's kind of move this back and over a little bit. And you can see we're pretty close here, but the X is still a little wide. It's a little bit more rectangular this way than I'd like. So to be able to help with that, I'm going to change my render from textured to solid plus wireframe. And let's go in here and turn down our rows and columns because we don't need all of those faces. I could even turn this one down to like a two. Okay. Um, and then let's also come in Let's just try regular wireframe for a minute. Um, that's going to help. Okay, so I will come up here and it looks like our X is the one that really needs a little bit of a change in its scale, but not a lot. So I'm going to try like a 0.9 and then we can kind of scoot it over a little pretty close. Let's do an 8.5. That should do it. Perfect. Okay, so now... We're getting that into place. And now we can use those little corner points to just very subtly edit that till we get that looking the way we want. Okay, pretty good there. Let's go ahead now 
And I'm just going to go back to frame 151 and hit play. And it looks like this is actually tracking along with the top of that building really nicely. So you can see that pretty quickly and easily you can use some of those user tracks to create some geometry. And that's just going to make it that much easier for you um, to get that out of Nuke and be able to pass that on to the next person in your pipeline. Okay, so this is looking good. I'm pretty happy with that. Even if it comes a little bit unstuck at the end, um, it's just such a subtle amount that I'm, I'm happy with that. So what we're going to do is go ahead and write this guy out. So I'm going to come to my, um, I'll just kind of come over in this area here. Let's actually clear our properties bin. Just kind of clean up here for a second. And I'm going to use a write geo node. So I'll just type in write geo and we can just plug that right into the scene. And I want this to create an FBX that we can use um, in a 3D application. Um, so we'll go into our file here to write this out. Okay, so let's go into our reference files folder. And then we can just put it right here in the root. So I'm going to write something along the lines of dragon underscore shot underscore zero three. And then I'm just going to put another underscore and do a dot FBX. And I'll go ahead and say open. And then that's going to give me some more information that's been populated there. So file type, we're using FBX. And I want to put out pretty much everything. Um, I really only have uh, the camera, the point cloud, and the geometry to worry about. Um, but having the axes in there is helpful. So let's go ahead and we'll hit execute. And these are the frames that we want to use. So we'll go ahead and say, okay. And you can see that is writing out pretty quickly for us. So we'll go ahead and give this file, this FBX file to our 3D department. And we are gonna come back in the next lesson and begin compositing our rendered passes. So stick around and we'll be doing that in our next lesson.